The Avesta is the primary collection of religious texts of Zoroastrianism, composed in the otherwise unrecorded Avestan language. The Avesta texts fall into several different categories, arranged either by dialect or by usage. The principal text in the liturgical group is the Yasna, which takes its name from the Yasna ceremony, Zoroastrianism's primary act of worship, and at which the Yasna text is recited. The most important portion of the Yasna texts are the five gathas, consisting of seventeen hymns attributed to Zoroaster himself. These hymns, together with five other short Old Avestan texts that are also part of the Yasna, are in the Old or Gathic Avestan language. The remainder of the Yasna's texts are in Younger Avestan, which is not only from a later stage of the language, but also from a different geographic region. Extensions to the Yasna ceremony include the texts of the Vendidad and the Visparad. The Visparad extensions consist mainly of additional invocations of the divinities while the Vendidad is a mixed collection of prose texts mostly dealing with purity laws. Even today, the Vendidad is the only liturgical text that is not recited entirely from memory. Some of the materials of the extended yasna are from the yasht, which are hymns to the individual yasadas. Unlike the yasna, visparad and vendidad, the yasht and the other lesser texts of the avesta are no longer used liturgically in high rituals. Aside from the yasht, these other lesser texts include the nyayish texts, the ga texts, the saroza, and various other fragments. Together, these lesser texts are conventionally called korda avesta or little avesta texts. When the first Korda Avesta editions were printed in the 19th century, these texts together with some non-Avestan language prayers became a book of common prayer for lay people. The term Avesta is from the 9th, 10th century works of Zoroastrian tradition in which the word appears as Zoroastrian Middle Persian Abestag, Book Pavali P. Y. Saint K. In that context, Abestag texts are portrayed as received knowledge, and are distinguished from the exegetical commentaries the Zand thereof. The literal meaning of the word abestag is uncertain, it is generally acknowledged to be a learned borrowing from Avestan, but none of the suggested etymologies have been universally accepted. The widely repeated derivation from asterisk upastavica is from Christian Bartolome Altiranisches Waterberch, 1904, who interpreted abestag as a contraction of a hypothetical reconstructed Old Iranian word for praise song. Bartolome, Lobgesing, that word is not actually attested in any text. Historiography The surviving texts of the Avesta, as they exist today, derive from a single master copy produced by Sasanian Empire era 224-651 CE collation and recension. That master copy, now lost, is known as the Sasanian archetype. The oldest surviving manuscript K1 of an Avestan language text is dated 1323 CE. Summaries of the various Avesta texts found in the 9th, 10th century texts of Zoroastrian tradition suggest that a significant portion of the literature in the Avestan language has been lost. Only about one quarter of the Avestan sentences or verses referred to by the 9th, 10th century commentators can be found in the surviving texts. This suggests that three quarters of Avestan material, including an indeterminable number of juridical, historical and legendary texts, have been lost since then. On the other hand, it appears that the most valuable portions of the canon, including all of the oldest texts, have survived. The likely reason for this is that the surviving materials represent those portions of the Avesta that were in regular liturgical use, and therefore known by heart by the priests and not dependent for their preservation on the survival of particular manuscripts. A pre-Sasanian history of the Avesta, if it had one, is in the realm of legend and myth. The oldest surviving versions of these tales are found in the 9th to 11th century texts of Zoroastrian tradition i.e. in the so-called Pahlavi books. The legends run as follows, the 21 Nasks books of the Avesta were created by Ahura Mazda and brought by Zoroaster to his patron Vishtaspa Denkard 4a, 3a. Supposedly, Vishtaspa DK3A or another Kayanian, Dare DK4B, then had two copies made, one of which was stored in the treasury, and the other in the royal archives DK4B, 5. Following Alexander's conquest, the Avesta was then supposedly destroyed or dispersed by the Greeks after they translated the scientific passages that they could make use of AVN 7-9, DK3B, 8. 
Several centuries later, one of the Parthian emperors named Volox one of the Vologuses supposedly then had the fragments collected, not only of those that had previously been written down, but also of those that had only been orally transmitted DK4C. .The Denkard also transmits another legend related to the transmission of the Avesta. In that story, credit for collation and recension is given to the early Sasanian era priest Tansar high priest under Ardashir I, R. 224-242, and Shapir I, R. 240-242, who had the scattered works collected, and of which he approved only a part as authoritative DK 3C, 4D, 4E. Tanzer's work was then supposedly completed by Adarbad Marispandan, high priest of Shapur II, R. 309 to 379, who made a general revision of the canon and continued to ensure its orthodoxy. DK4F, AVN 1.12 to 1.16. A final revision was supposedly undertaken in the 6th century under Khosrau I, DK4G. In the early 20th century, the legend of the Parthian era collation engendered a search for a Parthian archetype of the Avesta. In the theory of Friedrich Karl Andreas 1902, the archaic nature of the Avestan texts was assumed to be due to preservation via written transmission, and unusual or unexpected spellings in the surviving texts were assumed to be reflections of errors introduced by Sasanian era transcription from the Aramaic alphabet-derived Pahlavi scripts. The search for the Arsacid archetype was increasingly criticized in the 1940s and was eventually abandoned in the 1950s after Karl Hoffmann demonstrated that the inconsistencies noted by Andreas were actually due to unconscious alterations introduced by oral transmission. Hoffman identifies these changes to be due in part to modifications introduced through recitation, in part to influences from other Iranian languages picked up on the route of transmission from somewhere in eastern Iran i.e. Central Asia via Arachosia and Sistan through to Persia, and in part due to the influence of phonetic developments in the Avestan language itself. The legends of an Arsacid era collation and recension are no longer taken seriously. It is now certain that for most of their long history the Avesta's various texts were handed down orally, and independently of one another, and that it was not until around the 5th or 6th century that they were committed to written form. However, during their long history, only the Gathic texts seem to have been memorized more or less exactly. The other less sacred works appear to have been handed down in a more fluid oral tradition, and were partly composed afresh with each generation of poet-priests, sometimes with the addition of new material. The younger Avestan texts are therefore composite works, with contributions from several different authors over the course of several hundred years. The texts became available to European scholarship comparatively late. Abraham Hyacinth Anquital de Peron travelled to India in 1755, and discovered the texts among Indian Zoroastrian Parsi communities. He published a set of French translations in 1771, based on translations provided by a Parsi priest. Anquital de Peron's translations were at first dismissed as a forgery in poor Sanskrit, but he was vindicated in the 1820s following Rasmus Rask's examination of the Avestan language a dissertation on the authenticity of the Zend language, Bombay, 1821. Rask also established that Anquital de Peron's manuscripts were a fragment of a much larger literature of sacred texts. Anquital de Peron's manuscripts are at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France P series manuscripts, while Rask's collection now lies in the Royal Library, Denmark K series. Other large Avestan language manuscript collections are those of the British Museum L series, the KR Kama Oriental Library in Mumbai, the Maharji Rana Library in Navsari, and at various university and national libraries in Europe. Structure and content In its present form, the Avesta is a compilation from various sources, and its different parts date from different periods and vary widely in character. Only texts in the Avestan language are considered part of the Avesta. According to the Denkard, the 21 Nasks books mirror the structure of the 21-word-long Ahuna Varia prayer, each of the three lines of the prayer consists of seven words. Correspondingly, the Nasks are divided into three groups, of seven volumes per group. Originally, each volume had a word of the prayer as its name, which so marked a volume's position relative to the other volumes. Only about a quarter of the text from the Nasks has survived until today. The contents of the Avesta are divided topically even though the organization of the Nasks is not, but these are not fixed or canonical. 
Some scholars prefer to place the categories in two groups, the one liturgical, and the other general. The following categorization is as described by Jean Kellens see bibliography, below. The Yasna The Yasna from Yatsizan, worship, oblations, cognate with Sanskrit yajna, is the primary liturgical collection, named after the ceremony at which it is recited. It consists of 72 sections called the Ha-iti or Ha. The 72 threads of lamb's wool in the Kushti, the sacred thread worn by Zoroastrians, represent these sections. The central portion of the Yasna is the Gathas, the oldest and most sacred portion of the Avesta, believed to have been composed by Zarathustra Zoroaster himself. The Gathas are structurally interrupted by the Yasna Haptinghati, seven chapter Yasna which makes up chapters 35 to 42 of the yasna and is almost as old as the gathas consists of prayers and hymns in honor of the supreme deity ahura mazda the angels fire water and earth the younger yasna though handed down in prose may once have been metrical as the gathas still are topic the visparad the visparad from visparatavo prayer to all patrons is a collection of supplements to the yasna. The visparad is subdivided into 23 or 24 cardo sections that are interleaved into the yasna during a visparad service, which is an extended yasna service. The visparad collection has no unity of its own, and is never recited separately from the yasna. The Vendidad The Vendidad or Vedevdat, a corruption of Avestan v Devo Data, given against the demons, is an enumeration of various manifestations of evil spirits, and ways to confound them. The Vendidad includes all of the 19th Nask, which is the only Nask that has survived in its entirety. The text consists of 22 fargards, fragments arranged as discussions between Ahura Mazda and Zoroaster. The first Fargard is a dualistic creation myth, followed by the description of a destructive winter on the lines of the flood myth. The second Fargard recounts the legend of Yima. The remaining Fargards deal primarily with hygiene care of the dead in particular Fargard 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 16, 17, 19 as well as disease and spells to fight it 7, 10, 11, 13, 20, 21, 22. Fargards 4 and 15 discuss the dignity of wealth and charity, of marriage and of physical effort, and the indignity of unacceptable social behavior such as assault and breach of contract, and specify the penances required to atone for violations thereof. The Vendidad is an ecclesiastical code, not a liturgical manual, and there is a degree of moral relativism apparent in the codes of conduct. The Vendidad's different parts vary widely in character and in age. Some parts may be comparatively recent in origin although the greater part is very old. The Vendidad, unlike the Yasna and the Visparad, is a book of moral laws rather than the record of a liturgical ceremony. However, there is a ceremony called the Vendidad, in which the Yasna is recited with all the chapters of both the Visparad and the Vendidad inserted at appropriate points. This ceremony is only performed at night. The Yasht. The Yasht from Yasti, worship by praise, are a collection of 21 hymns, each dedicated to a particular divinity or divine concept. Three hymns of the Yasna liturgy that worship by praise are, in tradition, also nominally called Yasht, but are not counted among the Yasht collection since the three are a part of the primary liturgy. The Yasht vary greatly in style, quality, and extent. In their present form, they are all in prose but analysis suggests that they may at one time have been in verse. The Sarosa The Sarosa, 30 days, is an enumeration and invocation of the 30 divinities presiding over the days of the month, cf. Zoroastrian calendar. The Sarosa exists in two forms, the shorter, little Sarosa is a brief enumeration of the divinities with their epithets in the genitive. The longer, Great Sarosa, has complete sentences and sections, with the yuzadas being addressed in the accusative. The Sarosa is never recited as a whole, but as a source for individual sentences devoted to particular divinities, to be inserted at appropriate points in the liturgy depending on the day and the month. 
Topic: The Nyayishas. The five Nyayishas, abbreviated NY, are prayers for regular recitation by both priests and laity. They are addressed to the sun and Mithra, recited together thrice a day, to the moon, recited thrice a month, and to the waters and to fire. The Nyayishas are composite texts containing selections from the Gathas and the Yasht, as well as later material. Topic: The Gauze. The five gauze are invocations to the five divinities that watch over the five divisions gauze of the day. Gauze are similar in structure and content to the five nyayishas. Topic: The Afranagans. The Afranagans are four blessing Texts recited on a particular occasion, the first in honor of the dead, the second on the five epigominal days that end the year, the third is recited at the six seasonal feasts, and the fourth at the beginning and end of summer. <laughs> Fragments All material in the Avesta that is not already present in one of the other categories falls into a fragments category, which, as the name suggests, includes incomplete texts. There are altogether more than 20 fragment collections, many of which have no name and are then named after their owner, collator or only a Middle Persian name. The more important of the fragment collections are the Narangdistan fragments 18 of which constitute the Urbadistan, the Persishnia questions, also known as fragments tamoras, and the Haddock Nask volume of the scriptures with two fragments of eschatological significance. Other Zoroastrian religious texts Only texts preserved in the Avestan language count as scripture and are part of the Avesta. Several other secondary works are nonetheless crucial to Zoroastrian theology and scholarship. The most notable among the Middle Persian texts are the Denkard, Acts of Religion. Dating from the 9th century, the Bundahishkan, primordial creation, finished in the 11th or 12th century, but containing older material, the Mainog i Kairad, spirit of wisdom, a religious conference on questions of faith, and the Book of Art of Varaf, which is especially important for its views on death, salvation, and life in the hereafter. Of the post 14th century works, all in New Persian, only the Sad Dar, hundred doors or chapters and Ravayat's traditional treatises are of doctrinal importance. Other texts such as Zartushtnama, Book of Zoroaster, are only notable for their preservation of legend and folklore. The Aogamadeka, We Accept, a treatise on death is based on quotations from the Avesta. <laughs> References Notes Citations Works cited Topic. External links 